Hi again, in this video I'll be talking about basic ribbon work. So how to make uh, fun things that use rolled fondant and chocolate dough. Specifically, I'm going to be showing how to make handles, which you saw perhaps earlier on my basket cookies. The second item, using basically the same techniques with a little bit of a twist, I'm going to show how to make some simple rolled roses that add dimension perhaps to cakes or cookies. These are of small scale, so they look particularly great on cookies. Then the third element of ribbon work, you know, third variation of ribbon work that I'm going to share is these tiny little bows, also great embellishments for cookies as on this heart. And then we'll advance to larger embossed textured ribbons. Again, most of the techniques are similar in terms of the rolling and cutting, but I'm going to be introducing slight textural changes and twists in making each of these different elements. First of all, just a little bit of commentary on rolled fondant versus chocolate dough. I've got a whole video about how to make chocolate dough. I love it. And my design preference is to use it on cookies and cakes. If I can get away with not using rolled fondant, I will most usually use a chocolate dough, either a dark one or a white version, because if made with a high grade chocolate, it, is, it, it sets up rigid when it air dries. But as soon as you bite into it, it melts in your mouth. So it's just a really um, great modeling medium that's super, super duper tasty. The downside of it is, of course, it's made with chocolate, so it's much more heat, heat sensitive. So if I need to make an object, such as these handles for baskets, that need to stay rigid always under any temperature scenario and not flop over, then rolled fondant is a better medium because it dries harder, quicker, and isn't prone to melting, certainly if temperatures get above a certain point. So for very vertical, slender objects, I will shape and form basic ribbons with rolled fondant. And as I move to elements like these bows that are going to be resting on something, so if they get a little soft, it's going to be less obvious, then my preference is to work with something I consider more tasty, which is the chocolate dough. And again, refer to my other video for how to make the chocolate dough, um, because it goes into great detail on that subject. I'm going to start first with working with the rolled fondant and do these very, very basic ribbons that form these handles and show you how I do that. Fondant is nothing more than a sugar dough and it's got some gums and other stabilizers in it if you buy it off the shelf, which is what causes it to set up much more rigidly than the, the, chocolate, the chocolate dough, which is a mixture of chocolate and corn syrup and that's it. Now I've got rolled fondant here. It's like Play-Doh. If you've not worked with it, it behaves like Play-Doh. It typically comes white, though it can come, it can come tinted in various shades of brown and flavored, but I'm using a basic white dough here. I've kneaded in, to get a blue, I kneaded in earlier some blue food coloring. I use my same liquid gel food colorings that I used to color my royal icing, and I just kneaded in like you would bread dough, you know, on a cutting board, kind of back and forth until the color is homogenized. And for that, that um, particular task, you might want to use gloves because the coloring gets a little bit, can get a little messy. So I'm going to make a blue handle. And when I'm doing them, you'll notice, perhaps you did, that these handles are all pretty much the same size and shape. And you can eyeball that, but if you want to really preserve some consistency of size and shape, I suggest making a little bit of a template for these before you get started so that you can size them all accordingly. And you can do this various ways, but what I did was I shaped a piece of wire into the shape of the handle that I wanted that would fit my basket perfectly. And then I simply lay it down on these little cardboard working areas. Again, I like to put work on cardboard for this particular task the way I assembled some of my baskets earlier because once I'm done with this handle, I can set it aside and put it somewhere else to dry so it's pretty mobile. And so for each of these, I took a pen or a marker and traced the outline of this wire handle. So I have several little cardboards I can use so I can make many, many of these at one time. And this, this traced mark, it's not perfect, but it'll be enough of a guide to shape this handle once I get the ribbon cut. Okay, so again, this is a video on basic ribbon work. So all these things I'm gonna show you start with a ribbon of fondant or chocolate dough, naturally. How do you get that? Well, since I'm making long strips of dough, the best, the best thing to do is to start with a form of the dough that's elongated. So I'll take my big blob of dough and I'll typically flatten it into a long piece. And if it's sticky, it's a little warm in here today, I will dust the surface lightly with powdered sugar, but I try to do this minimally because if any powdered sugar remains on the surface, it's sometimes hard to get off later once the element dries. So I'm going to wipe excess off. 
And for rolling this, in, the first step in making ribbons is to roll it into a flat, long sheet. And then the second step is simply to cut the ribbons the width you want them. And there's certain little tips and techniques for doing that. For rolling, you could roll out with a rolling pin. I much prefer to use my rotary pasta machine, my hand held, my hand cranked, I should say, pasta machine, because I can get a much thinner ribbon and much more uniform ribbon than I can ever get rolling it with a rolling pin. So this is a really handy tool and they're typically pretty inexpensive. I think maybe 50 bucks, I'm guessing. I bought this a while ago, so they might be more expensive now. So I want to feed this in. I want to create a long ribbon, so I'm feeding it into the machine lengthwise rather than widthwise. And I've got it set on the number one setting. There are nine settings on this pasta machine. I'm just going to pause here. The one is the op most open setting. They're about an eighth of an inch apart. And for the handles, I roll it typically to a number three setting, which is maybe one sixteenth of an inch thick. I like to start most open and then gradually work it through at more close settings so that I don't shred the dough. If you try to jam a big blob of dough through a really thin setting, you'll end up with a ripped ribbon rather than a nice smooth ribbon. Um, normally you would clamp this pasta machine onto your work surface so it doesn't move around. It just doesn't fit on my work surface, so I'm gonna be holding it as I'm rolling, and that, that can work too. Okay, so this is rolled through on the number one setting, about an eighth of an inch thick. I want a more delicate ribbon, so I'm gonna at least take it to two, if not three. And again, these are pretty long pieces, so I'm trying to keep this ribbon intact. As it's coming through, I'm guiding it out on the other end so that it doesn't fold back on itself and potentially stick to itself. I actually think this is thick enough, uh, or rather thin enough, for the purposes I want. If it gets too thin, it's harder to handle in the next shaping process. Now to cut ribbons, you just need a ruler and a sharp paring knife. This one's kind of hanging off my work surface, which is somewhat short, so I'm just going to cut it so it's a little more manageable. And then for cutting ribbons, again, I want to, I, I laid that in the powdered sugar. I'm wiping off extra that I don't need because I don't want it sticking onto this dough. Roll fondant, once it's exposed to air, it's going to dry more quickly, so you have to work with it more quickly. So I'm just going to show you a simple ribbon cut. Um, I usually eyeball my ribbons, more or less, though I use the, the edge of the ruler as a guide. So my first, my first step is to create a clean cut to create one side of that ribbon. Between cuts, if there's any fondant or chocolate dough stuck to the tip, because this will apply to chocolate dough as well, I clean it off, because if you have a blob there, you'll end up tearing the ribbon on your next cut. And then I'm just going to slide this over. Those, those handles were only about an eighth of an inch wide, so I'm just going to slide this over about an eighth of an inch. I'm leaving this piece of dough intact because I find that if I move it off the cutting board and try to do the next slice, the whole larger piece will shift and I'll get a much more wavy ribbon. So this, leaving that little piece there kind of acts to keep the ribbon from shifting around as I make the next slice. I've eyeballed that it. it's about an eighth of an inch, but if you want to be precise, you could take your ruler and we'll just do that and we'll mark off. I'm going to make it actually closer, somewhere between an eighth. Uh, I'm just going to mark it off here to an eighth of an inch so it's more exact. You know, if you're not good at eyeballing, I'm just making a little notch mark. And then I'm going to line my ruler up along those edges. And if I wanted to cut um, a bunch of these at one time, which I would recommend because I can get four or five ribbons, if not more, out of this one piece, I'm not going to lift that ribbon up either. I'm just going to keep moving this over and cutting so that I get the straightest possible ribbon. I'll show you in a bit what will happen if I do lift up that, that other fondant and try cutting again. It may just shift on me. So I'm going to make a few cuts in this. And here I'm, I'm eyeballing rather than marking it because I don't really want that little mark, that mark in the middle of the fondant like I have there. Hopefully these are long enough for these handles. I am going to um, trim these off and just shape one for you. This piece I won't need, so I'm going to cover that. I'm going to roll that up and ball it up and cover it with plastic so I can use it again for something else. And this one has a little notch in it, which I don't like, so I'm going to scrap that and I'm going to work with this second one, which is much more of a perfect cut. I'm going to move this piece aside and show you what happens a bit later when I try to cut that without leaving that dough next to it. And now you want to work with this, if you're going to shape it into anything, bow, handle, or whatever, 
You want to work with it while it's still pliable. So I don't cut too many strips at one time because as I said, it will dry pretty quickly. And all I'm doing is basically laying it on this cardboard to kind of follow the outline that I, that I drew here before. I'm trying to get it as symmetric as possible. And then I will trim edges now so they're even because it's easier to trim the dough when it's wet than after it's hardened. Then it gets more fragile and you're more likely to break it. So I think it's not quite symmetric. So I'm gonna bring this side in a little bit and trim off that end a little bit more. And there I've got a, a decent looking handle. So I would set this aside at this point, let it dry until I could pick it up as you saw me pick up the other ones earlier and hold it up and up and down and be ready to stand upright um, in my cookie basket. The uh, other thing that I did to embellish these ribbons is I simply piped some royal icing dots on them after the fondant was dried. So that's a basic straight cut ribbon, no texturing to it. I'm gonna show you what might happen if I attempt to cut a ribbon while moving that extra, you know, moving, moving away that side piece, I tend to see more shifting going on. So I'll start again. I'm holding down also on the ruler to keep it from sliding and to keep the piece of fondant underneath it secure as I cut. So I've moved that side piece and let's see if I can get a nice, a nice even cut. You'll see how it shifted up here at the top. It seems to, it shifts more along the whole length of the ribbon. And I, I tend, this actually looks pretty good, but I tend to get more of a wavy cut. So that's straight basic ribbon. I'm gonna move next. I'm gonna still work with fondant for these roses that I'm gonna do next. Let me pull another example of those back out. I've got one that I did almost entirely with pink rolled fondant. And I've got one here that's got a little pink edge in a white interior. I used two pieces of fondant, pieced them together and rolled them through the machine before I cut them. So this is a slight nuance. Um, this edge of this has also been cut with a scalloped cutting tool. So the, again, this is a little twist. We'll start with a basic ribbon, but I'll apply these twists as we go. Okay, so I'm going to now to do a ribbon application in a two-tone rose. And to do that, I start as I did before with a blue ribbon in shaping each of these colors into kind of an oblong. And one thing I should say about fondant, if it comes straight out of the container, same thing with chocolate dough, if you've made it and it's sat for any period of time, you wanna work it in your hands till it's nice and homogeneous and pliable and soft because it can stiffen up in these containers over time. So I've basically just scrunched them together and I'm gonna have a kind of a two-tone ribbon and to create this little pink edge, I'm gonna cut just inside of the, you'll see, but I'm gonna cut just along the edge of the pink so I have a little pink edge showing up. You can do a solid color though, of course, as well. So I'm gonna open up my machine again to one rather than trying to jam this through a really tight opening and potentially ripping it. I'm just gonna start with the more gradual entry into the device and try to guide it out as it comes out the bottom because if it folds back on itself and if the dough is, at all, is too soft, it'll just stick to itself and you won't get a nice long sheet. Now here there's some edges that are kind of ragtag and they can sometimes get caught up in the machine when they go through on the next roll and make my roll difficult. So I just, I'm gonna pull that off, I cut that off. And I'm going to send it through again, this time on the two setting. And I think for the purposes of these roses, I wanted them looking pretty delicate. So I took them through to setting three. That's usually as thin as I'll go with ribbons. Okay, so I've got that rolled. And to get that edge, I'm just gonna straighten it up a little bit. Use my ruler again as a guide and cut really close to that pink edge just so I get a little bit of a touch of it at the top. Actually, I'm gonna cut a little bit further away because we're also gonna scallop it. So I need to leave room for scalloping. So let me take that away. Ah, maybe like a, maybe about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the pink edge. And the pieces that um, I'm not gonna use for this two-tone rose, I can use for a solid rose. I can use the white to make a white rose. Or I can ball it up and knead the colors together and end up with a soft pink that I use for some other application altogether. Okay. I leave for this, for this ribbon, you can, I don't need all this overhang too. I can probably get another rose out of this. I'm gonna cut this about a half an inch wide and I can probably get another rose out of this other white piece in a bit. So we'll set that aside. I do want to give it some texture though. 
I don't know, again, if you notice the scalloped edge. To do that, I use these craft shears. They're really fun for creating scalloped and otherwise wavy kinds of ribbons. And they come in all sorts of patterns and shapes. But this one's particularly nice for the roses. And so to cut, you just simply cut. Uh, I don't clamp all the way down. I don't, I don't do a full cut. So the tip is always a little bit open at the end because that allows me to scooch the scissor up to right where I left off. So I, I don't have any scallops overlapping, if you will. So I'm advancing my scissor to where I left off before I move it forward again. So there it is in the notch. Lining it up with the notch I just cut and going about it that way. Whoops, that was more or less a full cut. And you see what happens is it creates a flat zone, so it's hard for me to get a nice scallop there again without cutting deeper into the ribbon. So that's the reason I try not to completely close the scissor. And I probably have enough for a single rose, if not more, so I'm gonna stop scalloping there. It doesn't matter that it's not an even, you know, perfectly even ribbon because I'll be pinching down the bottom of the rose, so you won't notice that it's wavy on this end by the time I'm done. So to make the rose, move those out of the way. What I do is I start by like turning, turning in an end of the ribbon and then I just roll it, into, roll it around on itself to create this shape. And if I want more slack, a more open rose, I might just give it a little more slack before I pinch it in at the bottom. So here I'm getting a little curvier, kind of wavier looking flower. And you can make these as big as small as you want. Like the larger the ribbon you cut, the bigger the rose you can create. I used to make these in large scale sizes for my wedding cakes when I had my wedding cake business. But I'm making this for a cookie, so we're gonna leave it pretty small. I think that's actually probably big enough. And so I'm gonna stop twisting it and I'm just gonna pinch the bottom down. This actually looks a little bit more like a carnation because I choked up on it so much. But that's a nice quick way to make a flower that adds some relief to a cookie when you want a little dimension on top. At this point I'd set it aside on a cutting board to air dry until it wasn't malleable because it's much easier to stick it on a cookie like this with the royal icing if I can press down on it without misshaping. Um, when the time comes to put it on the cookie, and I show this in my video where I make these heart cookies, I would then simply take a pair of scissors, now it's air dried and it's not going to misshape on me when I handle it, and I cut off that tail. I can kind of shave it off with the scissors so that the rose lies flatter when I stick it onto the cookie, like so. So that's a basic rose or carnation. Ribbon flower is a way to, way to, what to call it. Okay, so now I'm going to move away from fondant onto chocolate dough. And as I said before, I like to use, I like to use chocolate dough for ribbon work when the ribbons are just going to be lying flat on something so that if they do soften up when they are served, there's less of a risk of them, kind of, you know, you noticing that they're kind of melty and soft because they're not having to stand on their own for any particular purpose. So for these little ribbons, for instance, on this cookie, I use chocolate dough. And I use a semi-sweet chocolate dough, which is why it's dark. Again, you can make it with white chocolate, which I show in another video, and you'll end up with a nice creamy white, white dough that can also be tinted in the way that you would tint fondant. So to make this tiny ribbon, it's again, just a, it's really just a variation of what I did for the fondant handle. But I'm going to bend it back onto itself after I cut the ribbon. So I'm flattening it out a bit, adjusting my machine, starting on the number one setting. And this dough was made maybe a week ago. It's, the dough will be quite soft when I first make it, but then as it sets over the course of a day, if it's really cool out, it firms up into this Play-Doh-like consistency, more like Tootsie Roll, actually. And then I can shape and handle it. But I try to handle this even less than I do rolled fondant because the heat of my hands can sometimes soften it and make it harder to work with. With the dark chocolate doughs, I try to use as little powdered sugar as possible. You saw me kind of frantically cleaning off my surface of powdered sugar because it will really show up on this dough because it's dark. So I'm just, so I'm gonna clean my ruler for that reason too, because it's covered with powdered sugar. And I'm just gonna cut an eighth of an inch ribbon the way I cut it for the handle. Same process, do one line, leave the extra dough to the side there, shift the ruler over. I had a little trouble getting that ruler up off the dough because the dough is stickier than the fondant. I'm going to do a couple of these. 
If you have to, I lightly dust the back of the ruler when it's sticking to the dough, but I, I didn't move this chocolate dough altogether too much off the cutting board, so I'm not gonna do that. And I'm gonna press it a little less hard to keep that ruler in place, and that might be enough, yeah. Okay, so to create these little bow loops, I simply take this ribbon and I form a loop, and then I just kind of keep folding it back on itself until I get enough loops. I'm just doing these half little bows to create bows to either side of the rows on my heart cookies. But if I wanted to create a fully formed bow and I ran out of dough, I could simply take another ribbon and add to this one. I'm going to add another, let's see, I'm pinching at the bottom to keep the dough together. I'm going to add another three or four loops to create a really symmetric little bowlet here. So there are different ways. You can do half bows or full bows. I really like the look of that at this point. So again, I'm going to pinch off the extra because I can re-roll this right away and set this to the side. Um, with this particular bow, I could apply it more or less immediately to the cookie without waiting for it to air dry. Just simply glue it down with royal icing as long as I didn't touch the loops because I wouldn't have shaped them. But because it's not standing on edge and I don't have to apply any pressure from the top to actually stick it to the cookie, it's less critical that it be thoroughly air dried before I use it. But the chocolate dough will also stiffen when air dried. Here's the bow I did a while back. It's, it's, you know, I can push on it without really misshaping it. If I were to really manhandle it, the warmth of my hands would again soften it back up to this consistency. Not so with rolled fondant. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do and the last thing I'm going to do in terms of ribbon work is I'm going to advance to some slightly larger ribbons that have been embossed. So this one has a particular texture throughout the ribbon itself. I'm going to show you how I do that. And these, these kinds of ribbons, larger, are great for cake top decorating. I'm going to be decorating in another video a small cake, and I'm going to show you the application of those there when we get to that. So I'm going to reuse this dough. I'm going to set this ribbon off to the side because it is so cute. I want to save it for another day. And I'm going to get more chocolate dough and, and attempt to um, do a much bigger kind of bow here. I'm going to need to start with a larger mass of dough. Now, one thing I should note about chocolate dough, here's some dough that I've worked for a period of time. It's been in my hands, but it's super smooth. This is dough that had been bundled. In, you know, I had made it, and I packaged it, and I haven't worked it yet. So it's a little darker and shinier on the outside. This came from the same batch. And I don't know if you can notice, but it's actually a little crusty on the outside. So oftentimes, before I work with dough, and I want to add more dough to this mass so I can get a bigger ribbon, I can either knead it on my work surface, but if it's all at all gritty, sometimes there are little gris, grit, little grit of cocoa butter crystals that recrystallized when you made the dough. Sometimes you can feel them in the dough. And the way to get rid of them most often is to just run this dough through the finest setting on the pasta machine and it'll kind of smoosh out any of those little hard crystals. I don't really feel any in this dough, but I'm going to do it anyway just to show you what I mean. So I, I took it up. I had it open. I rolled it through on one, and now I'm going to roll it through on nine, which is the tightest setting. And this is going to actually shred the dough. You'll see it's coming out really sheer and almost shredded, but that also serves to kind of get out any, any lumpiness that you might have in the dough. And this is typically more of a problem with white chocolate dough because it has a higher cocoa butter content and some of those cocoa butter crystals can, they have a tendency to reform and create a little grittiness in that dough more so than in semi-sweet dough. But having done that, it's now, now nicely kneaded through. There's none of this harder stuff on the outside so I can get a much more uniform roll when I when I run that through the machine to create these big, big bows. So I'm kneading those two pieces together. Again, starting with something that's relatively oblong. And for this ribbon, I am gonna lightly dust my work surface ever so lightly because after rolling it and cutting it into a ribbon, I'm going to emboss it with another rolling pin and that second roll over it can cause it to stick to the surface sometimes and I wanna be able to get it off after I've done all that. So the first step, again, is similar to what we've done before, just taking it through the machine. I'm trying to move my hand here to the other side to keep it anchored. I wish I could have clamped this to my surface. You should definitely do that. This dough's a little soft, so it folded back on itself before I pulled it out. So I lost a piece back here. <laughs> That's the reason for guiding it through as you go. 
For these embossed ribbons, I won't roll it to setting three. The most I ever roll it to is two, which is the second widest setting, because as I roll it with this embossing pin in the second step, I'm going to flatten the ribbon even more, and I find that if I roll it too thin to start, it's hard to get any texture in the ribbon with the other pin. So lightly dusted surface, roll to uh, a two setting. I've got a few little air bubbles in there, but I think they'll come out when I run this other pin over it. And there are different tools you can use for embossing ribbons. This is a tracing wheel for sewing, just to create stitch marks. There are also these textured rolling pins, and they come in all sorts of different textures. This one happens to be kind of a basket weave pattern, and now I'll simply roll it over on the top to create that imprint. There are also things called texture mats, which are flat plastic sheets that have texture in them, which you stick face down onto the, the dough, and then roll a regular rolling pin over to transfer that impression into the dough. But here you're working with a pin. So again, while the dough is still pliable, you want to just do a nice uniform roll. The difference here is I haven't cut my ribbon first because if I were to cut my ribbon first and then roll this rolling pin over it, I'd end up with all sorts of wavy edges. So I emboss the whole sheet and I'll cut maybe multiple ribbons out of this. I can probably get two big fat ribbons out of this if I'm, if I'm lucky. It's not the widest sheet. But you want to emboss first before cutting the ribbons or you'll misshape your ribbons, and that's an important difference. I'm going to cut these about three quarters of an inch wide to make that ribbon. And I, as I said, I think I can get two out. I'm leaving all the other pieces down, same thing I did before. If there's anything on the tip, and this is more likely to be the case with chocolate dough because it's softer and it tends to mess up your cutting tools, clean it off, clean off the blade between cuts. Now hopefully that light dusting is enough to make it easy to get these pieces off the cutting board without misshaping the ribbon. If not, ball up the dough, dust the surface a little bit more, maybe let the chocolate dough sit a little bit after you've worked it because it can soften up in that process and become harder to handle. But I, I had no trouble really getting these off without stretching the ribbons. So there are my embossed ribbons. To create this um, half loop, I do just what I did for that little chocolate cookie ribbon. I just form a loop, bend it back on itself. This dough is heavier because it's bigger, so these loops will tend to collapse on themselves a little more readily than the small ones will. So you may not be able to do as many at once before they start pressing into each other. But what you can do is do three or four if you want to create a full bow. Let that sit a little bit, let it air dry. Then do another loop or two and then add it to the previous piece. There's just maybe a little bit more waiting time when you're working with big, large chocolate pieces to prevent them from smushing into each other. So that's the basics of ribbon work with both rolled fondant and chocolate dough. We covered how to make handles for basket cookies. We covered how to make teeny little ribbons for cookies, larger ribbons for cakes that are embossed, and also showed a scalloped edge cutting technique for making these little ribbon roses. In my other videos, you'll see how I apply these to decorating cookies and cakes, so stay tuned.